Okay, my calm fam, uh, that was uh, Saint Etienne with Only Love Can Break Your Heart, cover of the Neil Young song. Um, uh, they're both awesome, both versions. So today we're talking about Lucian. Uh, um, let me see. Papers, please. And... Um, Uh, um, your final is, what is this, MW12, MW2, MW2, the 18th of May, um, so still a few days away, um, yeah, and it's from 1 to 3, so 518 from 1 to 3, um, is your final, um, if I get all your papers, uh, you might not have a final. Uh, so, um, what do you think? If you think that's a good idea, send me your paper. If you think it's a bad idea, don't. Um, okay. And, uh, tragedy next semester, sign up for it. I already mentioned that to you, so I won't dwell too long on that. Um, and uh, the, all the lectures are on the uh, Professor Pletcher channel now. Um, so if you have the old URLs, they're not going to work anymore. Uh, you got to Google search, Google search, YouTube search for Professor Pletcher. And you'll find them. And it won't be hard because they're there. Okay. So let's talk about Lucian, Lucian of Samosata. Um, we're, we don't have a really um, good idea about Lucian's dates. Um, uh, we know that he was writing sometime about 100 CE, 120 CE. Oh, that's my, what my note says. Uh, uh, he's a... Oh, a little bit later than the other writers that we've worked on. Um, I mean, that doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, 
So, yeah, sometime between 120, 150, 200 ish. Like, it's kind of a guess uh, because we don't have a firm uh, birth or death date for, for, for Lucian. Uh, Samasada is interesting. His birthplace um, was on the. Um, not far from the Euphrates River. Um, and uh, so, I mean, he might have been what we call nowadays a person of color, uh, which is a stupid phrase, but anyway. Um, uh, uh, he's certainly multilingual. Uh, he uh, was a Raytor. Uh, well, I guess I should write that down for you. So he was a Raytor. You will see in this word, uh, rhetoric, rhetorical, you know, we get a bunch of English words from this. Um, well, what a Raytor was in the context of Lucian's time and place was, uh, I suppose the closest parallel would be a lawyer. Uh, he wrote a lot of documents um, and stamped a lot of things and gave speeches when necessary, I suppose. Um, but I mean, you had to be really well educated. I mean, think about it. He, he would have, he would have had his native language. He would have had Greek. He would have had Latin. He would have been fluent in all those things. Uh, so at least, at the least trilingual, um, and, but de very definitely multilingual, uh, which is a good trade to have. Um, and uh, yeah, so he's an interesting writer. Uh, so we did two works for today. We did the uh, uh, Lovers of Lies and the True History. Oh, let me get my notes off for the True History because there's so much plot that happens in the True History. Lovers of Lies is more straightforward. Uh, He's dealing with um, different schools of philosophy, or at least he's not dealing with different schools of philosophy. He's dealing with his contemporary teachers of those schools of philosophy. Um, those are different things. So, like, you know, if you teach Platonism or Aristotelianism or what else goes on down here, uh, uh, Stoicism, Pythagoreanism. Um, yeah, so like, you know, it's like one after, but he's not, it's not, it's, he's not attacking the basic philosophy. He's attacking, or I should say satirizing, uh, the, the, the way that these things are taught, uh, in his day. Uh, and so he kind of makes fun of one teacher after the other, uh, uh, Tychiades, Philocles, Ion, Cleodemus, uh, who else is there? Uh, Antigonus, uh, Erignotus. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. He's just, he's, uh, again, the point, the point here is he's not, he's not, I, I don't think on my reading, I don't think he's actually satirizing the, the, uh, thought behind the philosophy again he's just satirizing uh the the contemporary teachers who are making a buck off of it um i'm tempted to draw some parallel to televangelists right now uh but i won't do that um what else from the lover lovers of lies uh, do, do, do there's a sorcerer's apprentice uh, part. Um, any of you who have watched uh, Fantasia, the Disney film, will know this episode. 
where you cut in a broom a half and you cut that half and a half and it keeps multiplying and it goes on and on and on and on. Um, there are some ghost stories that go on here. There's an exorcism of a haunted house. How can I forget that? Uh, so it's about superstition. Uh, and the prevalence of superstition in uh, um, Lucian's day. Uh, this is a time when uh, there were a lot of uh, cults that sprung up. Um, this is a time when superstition was fairly rampant. Uh, and it's not hard to understand why that is from a, from a psychological perspective. Um, you know, the Romans have taken everything over. Your life is essentially just a, you know, meaningless cog in a wheel. Um, and uh, so it's sort of easy to understand why you might turn to uh, irrational forms of belief. Um, Then we get to the true history. <laughs> Which is essentially a satire or a parody. So we have to talk about the difference between satire and parody. Because uh, um, there, there, there is a kind of a difference. A satire is when you take the most uh, extreme elements of, of, of a thing... Uh, well, actually, no. Now I don't know how to explain it. I take it back. Maybe there is no difference between satire and parody. There definitely has to be a difference. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's a blind alley. Sorry about that. Um, but the true history one and two, this is a parody, <laughs> a parody of Herodotus, more or less, uh, who Lucian very famously labels not the father of history, but the father of lies, um, uh, which I don't disagree with necessarily. Uh, and so what <laughs> it's hilarious because what Lucian tells us is that everything that he's about to tell you is a lie and then at the end he tells you that everything that he just told you is true uh, <laughs> I just, I, but it's also a lie I mean it's it's all this unfolded lies and truth and uh, so satire parody whatever you want to call it uh, I think it's more parody than satire. Um, I, yeah, satire, I think, has a more direct political purpose to it, whereas parody is just kind of generally making fun of. Because um, there can't, I mean, Lucian can't have a political agenda against Herodotus. I mean, Herodotus has been dead for 600 years. So he can't, like, what's the fun in that? Like, What's the what's what would be the political point in that? There isn't one, uh, so that's why I think it's more parody than satire. So I guess uh, I think that satire has uh, more of a political punch, whereas parody is just uh, for just for laughs, um, basically. Um, so yeah, I suppose that's how I would. Uh, categorize a difference between satire and parody. I know I lost my train of thought earlier, uh, but I'm getting back to it. I'm working back to it. Don't just, come on, give me a break. Um, there are several uh, other sub parodies in the in the uh, true history. Of course, there's the sub parody of Odysseus um, <laughs> with Calypso which I think is funny as hell. Um, 
you know, oh, I wish I had stayed with you. <laughs> it totally upends the whole uh, uh, end of the Odyssey, right? Because in the Odyssey, it's like, oh, I want to get back to Penelope. And then they're reunited and, you know, happily ever after. But then in <laughs> Lucia, that's, he writes the secret note to Calypso saying, I wish I'd stayed with you. I, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I just, it's funny. Uh, what else? They fight an underwater battle. A couple of underwater battles, actually. Um, Swallowed by a whale. Hmm. Where does that story come from? I can't think. Uh... What else did I want to mention here? <laughs> he goes to the eye. I, I, my favorite, well, not my favorite, but one another funny thing is that when he goes to the underworld, uh, he sees Socrates, but there's but Plato's not there, which is just funny. It's like an inside uh, philosophy joke because. Socrates never wrote anything. Plato did. We only know about, well, we don't only know about Socrates from Plato, but we know most of what we know about Socrates from Plato, so it's kind of a joke. Uh, the fact that Socrates is there, Plato is not. <sighs> anyway, gosh, jokes are never funny when you have to explain them. Again, I never, so, right, so he's like, I'm not lying. I never, I never told a lie. And then he tells us the biggest lie of all, which is that um, uh, I'm going to write a sequel to this. Which he never does. <laughs> so it's like this construct I mean, this is, I mean, this is the parodical element of it, is that it's this construct of lies that are stacked on uh, one another. Um, and yeah, and so, I mean, the, the beauty of Lucian, and this, these are not the only things that he wrote. I mean, there's a lot of Lucian. There's a lot that survives uh, um, by, you know, comparison to other ancient authors. So Lucian is a uh, he writes in Greek he doesn't write in Latin um, for which I give him great credit but um, uh, yeah so he, he he his work survive in Greek um, uh, I mean and this fits into the larger sort of literary construct of things because I mean you have to understand that like you know, the Romans ruled everything at this stage. And here's a guy who's multilingual, who's uh, most likely, I mean, I don't know for sure, no one knows for sure exactly what Lucian did for a living uh, outside of writing. Uh, but like, you know, he's probably writing documents in Latin and, uh, um, and then also translating them you know, into other languages, uh, but he writes in Greek. He chooses to write in Greek. Why does he do that? I think, uh, well, I mean, you know, in part because uh, the Greek literary tradition at this point in history was the, uh, um, it was the, it was the, you know, the gold cup. It was the, it was the, the prize on the stage. Um, it was the Oscar, uh, whatever you want to think about the one thing that you want to win or whatever. Um, and Lucian's writing is really good. I mean, it, it, he was a man of a, a, a very uh, deep sense of humor um, and a very deep uh, lear um, learning, um, and so his jokes are funny. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I want you to send me your papers. I have to go to a Zoom meeting now. Um,
I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye.